You'll recall a week or two ago, I gave you a, a, a story out that was, I believe it was published in Science. It was just a fascinating story about how the emulsifiers and surfactants that are put into processed food so that things mix with each other and not separate basically. Uh, what these what these chemicals do is they change the way different compounds relate to each other and, and particularly to cell membranes that they may be responsible for there's increasing concern that they may be responsible for part of the epidemic of uh, irritable bowel syndrome and other digestive disorders in the United States um, because they're 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 messing with the membranes in the gut and they're messing with the membranes of the bacteria in the gut which is destroying that so anyhow I that was a fascinating one. And now, you know, what about Corexit? What about this stuff? Again, it's, it's, a, it's a dispersant. Dr. Vina Anthony is with us, professor at the Division of Pulmonary Allerg Allergy and Critical Care Medicine at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. AUB.edu is the website. Dr. Vina, or Dr. Anthony, Anthony welcome, welcome to the program. Tom, well, glad to be here. Thank you for joining us. So what are you learning about this, uh, the, the stuff that was sprayed in the Gulf of Mexico to make the oil dissolve into the water, settle to the bottom, vanish, whatever, uh, the Corexit stuff, uh, this controversial dispersant? So, um, Corexit, as you know, was used in the, in the Gulf oil spill, and we examined the effects of Corexit on the respiratory epithelium. The lung, as you know, is in constant contact with the environment because of the air that we breathe in, and we wanted to evaluate if this dispersant um, had, or as you described it as an emulsifier, um, had any effect on the respiratory epithelium of different species, both mammals and aquatic animals. And what we found was that, yes, um, the Corexit had the potential to cause injury to respiratory epithelial surfaces um, in our breathing tubes and in uh, the gills of uh, aquatic animals. And that, um, uh, more importantly, was that we had... A discovered that there was a enzyme, a naturally occurring enzyme, that if produced in adequate quantities, can inhibit or protect from some of the effects of core exit. Hmm. That's that's interesting. And by uh, by respiratory epithelial cells, epi epithelial, I believe, means what surface cells. Uh, it, I mean, usually the skin is referred to as that. So these would be the exterior cells in the lungs, the, the cells that are actually in contact with air that goes through our lungs? Absolutely, Tom. They're the first cells to, to interact with any environmental insult. And the epithelium is, is um, naturally a very um, a membrane that is protective, that has basically no, um, you know, no holes in it to let toxic elements through. So it's a very tightly bound membrane. Right. But the one effect that we noticed in ve when we examined these cells, human cells in vitro, was that there was a change in the permeability of this, allowing uh, the movement of molecules through the membrane into deeper portions of the lung. So, and in vitro meaning in a, in a test tube or in, in a, a petri dish. Or in a flask, yeah. Right. Um, are we, is there a any epidemiological data to support uh, a, a conclusion that Corexa has had a, a, a direct and measurable negative effect on human health in the, in the Gulf region? Uh, I don't think that there is direct evidence and that it is an area of significant research um, through the NIH guided studies and through mul multiple other studies that are ongoing in the Gulf region. Mm -hmm. um, we just examined materials in, we, in, in the test tube, so to speak. We did not look at them in vivo. The animals that we examined, the aquatic animals, the fish and the crabs, those we examined in vivo. In vivo, meaning in you vivo examine meaning the actual that, animal itself. True, true. We had core exit in the water that, the, that passed through the gills of fish and crabs. Right. And, and uh, was the consequence of that fatal? Was it just damage? Is, it, is, is there recovery from that damage? 
What does it do? Uh, Would it be like smoking, for example, damaging the lungs, or more like inhaling bleach, or more like inhaling, what, a solvent? It would be like if somebody um, inhaled a soap soap solution, Uh a dishwashing Right, a surfactant. In, In the aquatic animals, at low doses, it was very reversible, but at higher doses, it caused significant edema in the gills, and after 500 parts per, parts per million, uh, they did not... Um, wow. Edema meaning they, they swelled swelling. up with water from w- within. Yeah. Yes, there was swelling of the gills so that no more water could pass through the gills of the fish and the crabs. Huh. Meaning that this chemical has presumably interrupted the normal process of moving fluids through the, through the membranes of the gills that the body would normally be doing... Not not the external fluid, not the water, but the the internal fluids, right? Yes. Yeah. Huh. Fascinating stuff. So, is where where do we go with this knowledge, Doctor Antony? Oh, I think uh, some of the work that we presented and some of the research that is ongoing here at UAB is is actually provides uh, a message of hope. There is a strong, multi pronged uh, effort by multiple colleagues and scientists and clinicians here. To, to further um, find ways to increase the expression of this one enzyme that was protective. Right. And, uh, and if we can do that, then perhaps if there is another event that requ- that, that where there is exposure, we might be able to mitigate it or abrogate it or at least innovate it somewhat. Right. And, and presumably in vivo, in the, in the body of the animals, as opposed to adding that enzyme, I'm assuming if we were to add that enzyme and continue using Corexit, it would just neutralize Corexit's ability to do what it does to dissolve the oil. Uh, one would hope that we could use it, yes, in, in, in definitely in people, yeah. uh, to upregulate this enzyme. Right. Fascinating stuff. Dr. Vina Ant- Antony, you are doing marvelous work, uh, professor at the Division of Pulmonary Al- Allergic uh, allergy and Critical Care Medicine at the University of Alabama at, Bur- at Birmingham, uh, uab.edu. Thank you so much for dropping by today. Thank you, Tom.